Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of SeasideGolf.com presents Myrtle Beach. I'm your host Brian Thomas and today we're in Sunset Beach, North Carolina at Sandpiper Bay Golf Course of the Year for 2010. In just a few moments, Richard Krasak, Director of Marketing here at Sandpiper Bay is going to join the show, so stay with us. SeasideGolf.com presents Myrtle Beach, brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Now's the time to go places with Toyota. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. And the Green Turtle Sports Bar and Grill, with over 25 locations, meet you at the Turtle. And by Endless Golf Myrtle Beach Magazine, your guide to golf in Myrtle Beach. Well, joining the show now is Richard Cassack, Director of Marketing here at Sandpiper Bay in Calabash, North Carolina. 2010 Golf Course of the Year. Richard, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. Richard, you have 27 holes here, three wonderful nines. Tell us a little bit about uh, each one of those. Well, we'll start off with the sand course. The sand course is more of a parkland style golf course. You'll find more uh, tree lines, less water there. Go over to the, uh, the uh, Piper course. And it's, again, it's a parkland style course, but then towards the end, it kind of opens up and kind of gets you ready for the bay course because you get water on a lot of the uh, holes towards the end. Bay course, water on every hole, but it's very forgiving. It's very generous uh, landing areas out there. So every golfer of every skill can have fun here. Okay, let's talk a little bit about some of the charity events. You've been, you've been talking about, you've been hosting a lot of those here lately, and uh, I know you said you had a good success with one of them here recently. Absolutely, we have our Pretty in Pink tournament every year here, and we raised over $27,000 recently in that event, and uh, over the course of seven years, we've uh, raised over $110,000. So it's phenomenal what the community here and the membership has done here to Well, do for that. all the fans out there, thank you for helping with that Cancer Society. Oh, all you're right. welcome. Uh, let's move now to uh, one of the nines, the Piper Golf Course, and one hole that comes to mind for me is number three. Three on the Piper Course is a good par three. It measures about 200 yards from the back tees. All carry over water. If, you're, if you want to jump back on that back tee, go for it. Uh, as you get up to the men's tees and the ladies' tees, it's, such, uh, it's so much more forgiving, a lot less forced carry. But uh, all water carry over to the green, and then there's uh, guarded by the bunkers on the right. But it's a long, narrow green. Uh, it's, it'll challenge every golfer, but it's a good hole. Well, I know it's a beautiful sunny day here in the middle of November, and um, we're getting ready to go play some, uh, some golf here in a minute. But before we do, uh, the Piper number nine comes to mind. I want you to explain to our viewers how to play that hole. Uh, number nine is a straightaway par four. It's got bunkers on both sides. Split those bunkers off the tee. That'll leave you with about 150, 160 yards shot into the green that's heavily uh, bunkered on the right side. But that uh, green, it, it funnels from left to right back towards that bunker right there. So if you can hit a little cut shot in there, it's the ideal way to play the hole into the green. Well, you have three number one holes here, which is uh, uh, all of them are magnificent to start off your round with. Uh, before we go to number one uh, on the Bay Golf Course, explain to our viewers how we're going to play that. Well, the ideal way to play that golf hole is to hit your ball uh, at the farthest bunker. If you're looking at on the, if you're on the tee, look at that farthest bunker. Try to hit your tee shot at that bunker right there, maybe with a little uh, slight draw, and that'll leave you with a for you long ball hitters. It'll give you an opportunity to go for the green, but be careful. There's water that goes all the way down the left side of that fairway, starting at about the 150 marker, and uh, but there's no uh, green side bunkers there, so for those long ball hitters, it gives them a chance for Eagle to get their day started. Well, Richard, let's head over to number one on the bay course and play that challenge in par five. Let's do it. All right, Brian, this is number one on the bay course. As we talked about earlier, this is a fairly generous fairway here. Uh, the aiming point is that far bunker that you see almost in the middle of the fairway. That's where you want to hit it uh, at on the tee shot. If you can pull it off, Hit it between those two bunkers. That's a long way into this wind. Yeah, but they say when it's breezy, swing easy. That's right. We got a nice wind in our face, so swing easy. All right. Par five. We got it. We get. We can get there in three for sure. Now that's a good golf swing. Thank you. Right down the middle. Yep. Oh, great job. Oh, man, it's breezy out there. I today. told you. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's not easy to hit it in a, in a strong wind. I, I don't know if the viewers can, uh, 
can see this in our mic or hear this in our mics, but man. All right, let's put a good turn on it and see if we can't get one in play. Right there beside mine will be perfect. Let's get a little farther than that, I hope. Okay. Get around the corner. Tree line, go. Well, it's playable. Yep. Just a little bit left. Yep. I hit it good. Let's go see what we got. All right, Brian, I hit it out here, got it in the middle of the fairway. I didn't quite get it to the bunker that I wanted to, but it's a little bit breezy. So uh, all in all, I'd take it. It's a pretty good shot. That's well, uh, a great shot in the middle of the fairway. Yeah. Uh, the ideal shot here from this point here is just to try to get it beyond that bunker on the right-hand side there. That'll set you up with about 100 yards in. And if you hit the club that you need to to get you to that point right there, you should have a fairly easy shot into the green. And a full swing putting you in from 100 yards would be awesome. Absolutely. All right, we'll hit you a good one. Thank you. You couldn't have walked out there and placed that any better. Great well, shot. Well, I hit that one really good there. All right, we'll see what we got. Bingo. Thank you. Well, Richard, I uh, got a little bit fortunate here. I thought it was in the tree lines. It did get through somehow. Still yeah. a long ways to go to the green, so I'm going to do about the same thing you did and uh, just punch a three wood down there and keep it in play and then try to have a nice full shot into the green. Sounds like a good plan to me. Especially into that wind, so I don't think there's any chance of getting there. Just put a good swing on it. Thank you. Let's do it. Oh, that's really good there. Oh, I like, like that. Boy, Perfect. I tell you, we both of us must, must be working on our three woods because that was hit very, very, very <laughs> oh. well. All right, Brian, I'm down here about 140 yards from the green here. Two pretty good shots on this par five today with the wind being in our face. Let's see if I can get this close. Well, this is a man's par five. We both hit two good shots. We're nowhere near the green yet. Yep. This is going to be close for you. Oh, I'm feeling the love. Middle of the green. Yep. Yeah, leave me a birdie oh, putt. Great shot. All right. Well, Richard, after two great shots, I'm still about 75 yards from the middle of that green, maybe 80 to the back of that pin. Yeah, normally with a guy with your distance, you could get it there in two, but that wind, like we talked about earlier, it's in our face today. It was brutal, so, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. All right, well, I got a 56 degree. I'm just going to choke it down just a little bit because I don't need a full shot and see if I can't stick one close to make a birdie here. Knock it tight. A little left of the pin, but the distance felt good. Yeah, that's pretty good there. It's probably about 15 feet. All right, All right let's go not, roll some long bad. birdies. All right. All right, Brian, you hit a good one in there, it looks like. Well, little I appreciate chance. that. Got you a chance for birdie there. You looks want to like, tend that for me? Yeah, you got it, what, about 30 feet? You want me to tend it? Yeah, 30 feet. All right. You got it. All right, well, let's see if we can't make this. Well, I've seen you putt plenty of times. We get an opportunity to play golf quite often, so if it goes in, it'll be a normal thing to me. I hope so, I hope so. Got a little distance on it, though. You know, the green's in really great shape this time of year, Brian. There's no reason for me not to make it, really. Oh, that's looking good. Uh-oh, what'd I tell you? Look at that. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> wow. Great putt. The rest of it's good. Oh, thank you, sir. Nice par on a yep. monster par. You want to go ahead and take yours for a six? Um, nope, nope, nope. I'm going to go ahead and make this birdie. All right, knock it in. I think I owe you one from a couple years back anyways. Well, the greens are in great shape like we talked about just a second ago. I mean, they've been overseeded. They're in great shape for all the people coming down here over the winter and next spring. No excuse, right? No excuses. Look out. Except Look don't out. hit it to the hole. <laughs> Why do they always come up short and oh, get in the throat? Oh, man. That's good. No worries. Good, good par. Yeah, thank you very much. Same to you. Well, stay with us. Richard and I are heading over to number one at the Piper. Well, staying with me now is Richard Cassack here at Sandpiper Bay. Richard, we've played a hole already um, on one, one nine that you have here. We're going to play another one in a few minutes. But before we do that, let's talk about the Bay Nine and number seven. 
Bay number seven is a good par four. It measures about 350, 360 yards from the back tees. It's, it's a dog leg right. It's got water all the way down the right side and it actually fronts the green and then there's water that goes behind the green there. So a well-placed tee shot, left center of the fairway is great and then it sets you up for a really easy shot into the green. But make sure your club selection is good because you could come up short in the water or long over and don't want to do that. Well, again, we, we've brought this up a couple of times being 2010 Golf Course of the Year, and you've played a lot of these holes, but some of our viewers haven't. So explain how to play number eight on the bay to our viewers. Well, if the viewers are watching us right now, they can see number eight. It's right behind us here. It's a fabulous par four hole. Great carry over uh, wetlands here. Dog leg to the left. All you want to do is place the ball right in the middle of that fairway out there, and it'll leave you about 150 yards into an elevated green that's guarded by bunkers on both sides. All right, let's move uh, our attention now to the sand golf course and talk about hole number seven on the sand. Seven's a really good scoring hole. It's a straightaway par four. Dog legs, eh, maybe dog legs a little to the left there. Uh, you want to aim towards the right bunker out there and then gives you a short iron into the green, which has got a, is well protected by a bunker in the front and a sloping green that slopes from back to front. And one of my favorite holes here, uh, sand number eight. Talk about number eight. Oh, number eight's a par three hole. It's way, it measures about 150 yards from the back tees. Again, it's well bunkered around the hole. And the green, again, it kind of goes uh, back left to uh, front right is the way that the green slopes there. Nice hole, uh, very fair though. All right, before we move to the, the tee box that we're getting ready to play next on the Piper, one more hole, talk about number nine on the sand. Number nine, uh, it's a great par four. As a matter of fact, it's one of our best finishing holes that we have out here. It's a dog leg left. It measures about 410 from the back tees. Again, you wanna just keep it just to the left of the fairway bunkers on the right-hand side. That'll leave you with about 170 yard shot into a green. That again is bunkered on the left, bunker on the right, gives you a narrow front uh, to come into the green, but uh, it's a great fin finishing hole for us. Okay, now the third nine that we're gonna talk about is the Piper Golf Course, um, which we are getting ready to head to the tee box on number one there. Explain to our viewers how we're gonna play that hole and then let's head to the tee box. Number one is a dog leg right par four, all right? It's, uh, actually it's a slight dog leg right. Just keep your, fair, your, your, your tee shot just to the left of the fairway bunker and that'll leave you with a really easy approach into the green of about 150, 160 yards uh, for those players that are medium length like myself. <laughs> well, let's head to the tee box and give it a shot. Sounds good. All right, Brian, it's number one on the uh, Piper course. Uh, I talked about this, cor this hole earlier. Uh, fairly straight par four, slight dog leg to the right, but very little movement at all in it. Um, you know, we played number one on the Piper today. Uh, we played number, bay, number one on the bay, on the number one golf show for the Myrtle Beach area. I, on I like the way you day. think. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> I like the way you think. Very good. All right, we hit a number one right down the middle. All right. Oh, yeah. There that's you a, go. That's an A number one golf shop right there. Great swing. Thank you. All right, that's going to be tough to follow. Let's see you what I can game. do here. You know, I was at one of the golf shows up in the Northeast. I forget, maybe Pittsburgh or wherever. Someone said, what is that you say on the show when you say butter cut? And uh, you know how you slice the butter, butter? You know, you put a little nice soft cut on it, right? Absolutely. That's what I want to do right here. Nice little soft butter cut is what we call it. So let's see if it works out good. You're playing too much golf if you got that shot. Nah, I ain't playing enough. Nobody ever plays enough. Hit a good one. Little butter cut. Butter cut. See that? Oh my gosh, he's calling the shots now. Wow. All right, I'm down there with you. That's a good one there. Let's go see what we got. Let's see what we got. All right, Brian, I got it down here in the middle of the fairway again. Uh, really looking right at the flag here. This is a really good opportunity for me. Uh, you want to try to avoid that bunker on the left hand side there. Uh, that can give you a little bit of problems, but that pin's right in the middle of the green. Green slopes a little left to right, so let's see if I can make a good swing and knock it on the green here. Well, it's a beautiful day, a big green with a pin in the middle. Yeah. Oh, I like that one. That's looking really good there. Sweet. Ooh. Look at that, go in the hole. Ooh, get tight. I think it is from here. Yeah, Great shot. Good. Thank you. All right, Richard, I, got, I found the fairway. Uh, looks like I got about 135 to 140. 
I'm gonna hit a little knockdown nine iron, see if I can't get inside that wonderful shot you just hit up there. Well, the only thing that stands between me and you and the flag is that ball of mine, so hit you a good one. I might just kick that out the way as mine's rolling up there. Well, it's looking good. Be right. Oh, boy. Oh, get up. All right, got it on the green, got a putt at it. It's putting. I, can't I think this time I'm going to let you putt first. <laughs> well, Richard, I knew that you hit a good shot. Right, thank so, you. looks like I'm out. If you don't mind, pull that pin. You don't need me to tend it for you? No, I can see it. It's not that far away. All right. Looks well, like maybe 18 to 20 feet. Knock it in. It's an uphill putt, so it should be real easy for you to knock that in. Yep. Usually I'm a good putter. But well, these on these greens, I don't know how you can miss it. These are uh, Bermuda greens, right? Yeah, they're mini verde. They were just uh, put in in 2008, 9, and 10. We did it over a three year period. Oh, yeah, and then in 2010, you got golf course of the year. I remember that. That's right. All right, let's make this birdie. No, you didn't leave it short. No, it's right. not short. It went right. All right, that's good. Pick it up. All right, I'll take a par. All right, that's a good par. That's not a bad uh, score on this hole. No, that's a long par four yep. into that win. All well, right. come on, Birdie Meister. You've done it to me before, so it's time for a little payback. I can't stop you now. Get I there. Hit I didn't hit it. Oh, the rest of that's good. All right, thank We'll you. take a push. Yeah. Great par. I'll, anytime I can tie you is a great day. <laughs> All right, Brian, good hole. Thanks hold. a lot. Good hole, bud. Yeah, thank you. Well, stay with us. We're going for the tip of the week in just a few minutes. This golf tip brought to you by Seaside Golf Vacation at SeasideGolf.com. Welcome back here to Sandpiper Bay. I'm here to give you the tip of the week. We're going to talk today about that butter cut that Brian was talking about earlier today. What we want to do with that shot is we want to make sure that the club face is open at impact. So how do we do that? Well, one of the ways that I do it, and I think it's really great, is when we set up, take the face of your club and place it where you want the ball to end up, okay? Then take your body, aim left, and then you just want to swing along your body line. If you do that, there's that butter cut. All right, so all we want to do place our club face where we want the ball to end up, open your stance, swing along your body line, and you'll hit that butter cut every single time. If you want more help with this, come here to Sandpiper Bay. One of our teaching professionals will take care of you or seek a local PGA professional. Hi, I'm Mark Rosenberg, president of Seaside Golf Vacations, title sponsor of SeasideGolf.com presents Myrtle Beach. I'd like to invite you to contact Seaside Golf next time you're planning a trip to the Myrtle Beach area. We're the largest independent package company in North Myrtle Beach, booking approximately 30,000 rounds of golf a year. We could put you on any golf course in the Myrtle Beach area, including four private country clubs for a total of 99 golf courses. We could book golf and lodging or golf only. We'll be happy to help you next time you're planning a trip to Myrtle Beach. The Myrtle Beach area boasts nearly 100 golf courses, making it one of the premier golf destinations in the world. Area courses offer golfers of all abilities a huge range of choices. Prices range from economy to high end, and design styles range from Parkland to Lynx and everything in between. Many of golf's finest architects have left their marks here, Robert Trent Jones Sr., Jack Nicholas, Arnold Palmer, Reese Jones, Pete Dye, and Tom Fazio are just a few of the names you'll find on area courses. Golf Digest recently included 10 Myrtle Beach area golf courses among its list of the 100 best public golf courses in the U.S., more than any other geographical area by far. Our Myrtle Beach golf package prices are all-inclusive, so there's no hidden costs. Each golf vacation includes lodging, green fees, cart fees, taxes, and surcharges. 
But if you already have a place to stay, we can put together a golf-only Myrtle Beach golf vacation for you too. One of the unique things about Seaside Golf Vacations is that every one of our golf directors plays golf. We're avid golfers, we enjoy the game, and we know the game, and we know the courses in Myrtle Beach. We go out and we play the golf courses, we talk to the pros, we talk to the general managers, and as a result, we're informed about the conditions here, and we'll keep you informed as well. No group is too small or too large. Seaside Golf Vacations provides the same level of service to groups of all sizes. Whether you're flying solo, having a group of 4, 6, 20, or 100, we have the knowledge and experience to put together a special golf package for you. Another benefit of booking your golf trip through Seaside Golf Vacations is we have a centralized booking system. We can book all your tee times centrally. You don't have to contact each course individually. We'll save you a lot of time. Additionally, you don't pay any extra by booking through us. We get wholesale rates. We can put you on any course in Myrtle Beach, and we'll save you time and money. Choose from our long list of web specials and get fitted for a customized Myrtle Beach golf package. Either way, you'll save money and time. Also inquire about our other destinations in South Carolina and around the world. Seaside Golf Vacations at SeasideGolf.com or call 877-833-2255. Well, that's all the time that we have for this episode of SeasideGolf.com presents Myrtle Beach. Golfers, remember, when you want that package for the Myrtle Beach area, you can go to SeasideGolf.com or call the 1-800 number and talk to one of the golf directors there at Seaside Golf. A special thanks goes out to Richard Cassack, Director of Marketing here at Sandpiper Bay Golf Course in Sunset Beach, North Carolina. And I'm your host, Brian Thomas, and until next time, hit them like you want to. SeasideGolf.com presents Myrtle Beach. Brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Now's the time to go places with Toyota. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. And the Green Turtle Sports Bar and Grill. With over 25 locations, meet you at the Turtle. And by Endless Golf Myrtle Beach Magazine. Your guide to golf in Myrtle Beach.